focus of this lesson is on solving a non-square system of equations. So what does it mean to be non-square? Well, a non-square system is one in which the number of equations does not equal the number of variables. So we can see in the example we have here, there's, an equ there's two equations in the system, but there's three variables, x, y, and z. So notice two doesn't th equal three, so that's what makes it not square. So it's a non-square system of equations. So in that case, when you have that kind of scenario, then you're going to want to use the Gaussian elimination like we did when we had three equations with three variables. So the only difference, or not even necessarily a difference, is there's the possibility that you skip some of the steps in the process of a Gaussian elimination. But generally, you're going to follow that process, and it'll be obvious like when you need to skip a step. So let's go ahead and work our way through this example. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite the system so that the x's line up, the y's line up, the z's line up, and the constants line up. So if I need to move something across the equal sign, I'm going to do the opposite operation. So like when I need to move 11 over, I'm going to subtract 11 from both sides. So it'll appear as negative 11 on that right hand side. And then um, for the second equation, you can see I don't have an x term. I do have a y term and I do have a z term. So I want to make sure those line up. And again, I need to subtract the one from both sides to move it over so the constants line up. And so all I've done is just rearrange my system of equations. So then what else I would do, since we're going to be doing Gaussian elimination, is I would go ahead and just put my triangular form off to the side, just to keep track of it, because that's who I'm going to use to do my back substitution in the end. So to start off, so our step one, if you will, is we need that leading one on x. So I'm just going to kind of write that down. So we need a leading one on x. And you can see in our first equation we have an x, but we don't have a leading one on it. So I'm going to go ahead and write that first equation down. 2x plus 6y is a negative 11. And if I want to get a leading one, the case is you always divide off that leading coefficient, so that 2 in this case. So that's the coefficient on x. So if you simplify, this is x plus 3y equals a negative 11 halves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that over in my triangular form. That'll be my x equation with a leading 1. And then normally what I would do for a step 2, and I'll just kind of write it down, even though I don't have to do it here, is I would eliminate x's if I needed to. So however many times I needed to eliminate x. Since we have two equations, it would have been one time. Um, it would have been the x that was here. But we don't have an x, so this, this is already done. So there's nothing to do there. So then I would move on to my step 3, which is getting that leading 1 on y. So if we look at our equation that has the leading y, it's 6y minus 18z equals negative 1. I want a leading 1 on y, so I'm going to divide off 6 from every term. So in other words, I'm going to divide off the coefficient that's on y. And I get y minus 3z is a negative 1 sixth. So then that's part of my triangular form, y minus 3z equals negative 1 sixth. And then you do not have any other equations left, so um, you can say that z equals z naught. So whatever z equals, it's going to be z naught, we'll call it. So then now you have your whole triangular form. You've got your leading one on x, your leading one on y, and your leading one on z. So then now what you can do is use back substitution to solve. So that's, that's where you kind of end up. And so in the first uh, backup, we know z equals z naught, and we need to solve y in terms of that z. So we'll have to end up solving for y in our first backup. 
So we let z equal z naught because that's a given. And then we just keep in mind that we're trying to solve for y with our second equation there. So y minus 3z equals negative 1 sixth. But notice I didn't write the z, I wrote the parentheses. And in place of what would have been z, I'm going to put z naught. And then I'm going to simplify and I get y minus 3z naught is negative 1 sixth. And then I need to solve this for y, which is another way of saying isolate the y. So I'm going to add 3z naught to both sides of the equation. And so when I do that, I get y equals a positive 3z naught minus 1 sixth. So keep that in mind. You're going to use that along with the fact that z is z naught. And so when we back up here, we're going to end up having to solve for x, but we're going to use the two equations that I starred. So um, we're going to let, so I'm going to kind of write it up here. So this is still part of our back substitution. We're going to let z equals z naught, but we're also going to use the fact that y equals 3z naught minus 1 sixth. And we're going to solve for x. And we're going to use that last equation up the, at the top there. So it's x plus 3y equals a negative 11 halves. Notice I didn't write the y. In place of y, I'm going to put what y equals, which is 3z naught minus 1 sixth. Simplify, you get x plus 9z naught minus 3 sixths, which reduces to 1 half, equals a negative 11 halves. And then you're wanting to solve for x, so that means get the x isolated. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract off 9z naught from both sides of the equation, and I'm going to go ahead and also add a half. So in other words, do the opposite operation to both sides of the equation, and you get x equals negative 9z naught minus 11 halves plus 1 half. Go ahead and simplify by combining like terms. You get negative 9z naught, and then negative 11 halves plus a half is negative 10 halves, but that's just negative 5. Negative 10 divided by 2 is 5, negative 5. And so your solution at the end of the day is an ordered triple that depends on z naught. So the x value is negative 9 times the z naught minus 5. The y value is 3 z naught minus 1 sixth. And the z value is z naught. And this represents an infinite number of ordered triples that depend on your z naught value. So you could kind of use as a check if you wanted. Um, you don't have to do this. Like at this point, you're done with the problem. But you could pick a value for like z naught. So like if you pick the value 0, then everywhere there's a z naught, plug in 0. So 3 times 0 minus 1 sixth would give you negative 1 sixth. And then plug in a 0 for z naught in the x part. Negative 9 times 0 is 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And so one of the infinitely many ordered triples is negative 5, negative 1 sixth, 0. And you could plug that into both of your original equations and check to see if it makes them true, which it will. And, and you could go on and on. You could pick a different value for z naught. Maybe you pick 1 next time and see what results. But those are the infinitely many ordered triples. And you can't pick all the z naught values um, unless you sit there forever and ever. And even then, you're still not going to pick them all. So there's you don't have to write these individually. So I'm going to go ahead and cross that out. But note that your set of ordered triples that are represented here is an infinite number of ordered triples.